This could be a very long video, depending on how long I talk for. It could be uploaded in a winner or in parts. Um, I'm going to talk about all the winners of the past 30 Royal Rumble matches. Um, this year we'll celebrate its 30th anniversary, the 31st edition of the Royal Rumble event, which will debut the first ever all women's Rumble match. Now, 30 years ago, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was the original televised 20 man Rumble winner. Would I have booked Duggan to win that particular match? No, I wouldn't have had Duggan win the first ever televised 20 man Royal Rumble match. I feel like there was much more deserving and much more interesting individuals back at that time to win the first ever televised 20 man Royal Rumble match, uh, other than Dugan. I, I was never a big fan of Dugan. I don't, I don't dislike him. I just, you know, thought there would have been much better choices. A year on, the first ever 30 man Royal Rumble match took place won by Big John Studd. Um, again, I always feel like once you get to the end of the Royal Rumble 89, uh, once Boss Man and Hogan there are eliminated, the match starts to, you know, become a bit boring. DiBiase, he tries to make the match interesting, you know, when he's the final two with Big John Studd, but I just thought Big John Studd flopped as um, the 1989 Royal Rumble winner, didn't go on to do much afterwards and was actually really fired from the World Wrestling Federation. Um, I think the friend to fire him if he didn't slam um, one man gang at a house show or something, something like that. Um, and he, was, he ended up just being a special guest referee at WrestleMania 5. A year later, the 1990 Royal Rumble, which is one of my favourite Royal Rumble matches, um, was won by Hulk Hogan, who I love. He's in my top 10 of all time. Um, Hulk Hogan at the time was like the Mickey Mouse of wrestling. He was the biggest star and still is one of the biggest stars of the World Wrestling Federation wrestling, and you know, just in general. Um, did I think he... Um, should have won back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles for no. I thought um, I was happy with him winning the 99 Royal Rumble, but I didn't think he needed to win the 1999, 1991 Royal Rumble as well. I thought um, it was too early in the history of the Royal Rumble for there to already be a, a double, you know, back-to-back -back winner, especially it being the biggest star of the company at the time, it could have been like someone else like Davy Boy Smith or Mr. Perfect winning that year or even Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, I'd have preferred to see win that year. Now 992 Royal Rumble, I've mentioned 992 Royal Rumble. In fact I devoted a video saluting the 1992 Royal Rumble six years ago in 2012. 2012 does not seem like six years ago, doesn't it? But I am, um, like many others on here, I find that match to be perfect. <laughs> but, you know, there's three reasons why it was so good. The stacked roster that was involved in the match. <clears throat> the commentating by Bobby the Brain Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon. Them two together commentating that match was just gold. Um, Ric Flair, his performance throughout the whole match was just just excellent. You know, five woos for me. Um, and he's definitely, to me, one of the best Royal Rumble winners of all time. <clears throat> a year later, the 993 Royal Rumble. Now, it gets criticised, it gets overlooked quite a lot. Um, it didn't have the stacked rosters the year before, but it has its moments. I enjoyed uh, the interaction between Mr. Perfect and Ric Flair. I thought it was very entertaining um, and also it made Yokozuna look like a blooming monster at the end. You know, he looked so dominant, you know, he was booked very well. Um, stuff WWF doesn't, WWE rather, doesn't do that great at often is book people right and they booked 
turned Yokozuna into the most dominant heel that night, and you were scared for Bret Hart at WrestleMania 9. Speaking of Bret Hart, he was the joint winner of um, the 994 Royal Rumble match. Now, as a kid, um, I didn't like Lex Luger. He was like the John Cena of the 90s. The difference between Luger of the 90s and the John Cena garbage we've had to put up with now is WWF had competition back then, so they couldn't shove trash down our throat back then if we rejected it. So Lex Luger, at the time, I like him better as an adult, but at the time, the kids didn't like him, they rejected him, we preferred Bret Hart, and uh, you know, that match, I, I enjoyed the double elimination, I thought it was good, I enjoyed the whole co-winners thing, I thought it was a good angle going into WrestleMania 10. So I, I enjoyed it for what it was, and I was chuffed to see, you know, at the end of the day, Bret Hart become the WWF Champion at WrestleMania 10. Now, 995, 996, 997 and 998 had back-to-back -back winners. First, Shawn Michaels, whom we'll talk about. Um, I enjoyed him winning the uh, 995 Royal Rumble. I enjoyed the whole one-foot angle. Um... I didn't think the particular match itself was that great from 995. I thought it was too fast, you know, too short intervals, and I didn't think it quite worked. But um, again, like with Hogan, and I love Michaels, and I crush on Michaels back then, <laughs> as I've probably mentioned before. But um, must have been a long hair thing. But, anyways, um, like with Hogan, I didn't think Shawn Michaels needed to win back to back Royal Rumble. So I was happy with him winning the 95 one. I've always a little bit much him um, winning the 996 Royal Rumble match as well. Um, as for the other back-to-back -back winner and the only wrestler to win three Royal Rumbles, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He won his first two in 997 and in 998. Now to me, his back-to-back -back Royal Rumble wins worked because he was a heel and it was surprising when he won in 997. No one expected it. He wasn't quite, you know, top level star yet. Um, he had his King of the Ring moment, he had his fantastic match with Brett at the Survivor Series. But um, no one really bought in. No one really thought that WWE was going to push him um, to the, that WrestleMania caliber main event quite yet. And it was a shock when he won the Royal Rumble. And it, was, it was a good shock. It was funny. I, I enjoyed that book. It was really, really... Well done, I thought, and great storytelling, and he was the MVP of that match. As for his 998 Rumble win, he, the only person that should have won a 998 Royal Rumble was Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was the guy of the 998, and the, the attitude, he had the star, biggest star, um, he was one of the biggest stars of all time for sure, you know, you could argue Hogan. Austin, Rock, you know, it's between those three for sure. But 998, Steve was the man. Uh, and I, at match, it was uh, such a fun rumble to watch. And he definitely deserved to, to win. As for the 999 Royal Rumble match, it gets um, shit on quite a lot by some people. Um, you know, I watched it as a kid and I really enjoyed it. The, the build-up towards the match with Vincent. Steve Austin won, and, and number two was absolutely excellent. As much as we shit on Vince McMahon these days, as a wrestler, wrestling character, he was at his best when he was going up against Steve Austin. He was fantastic as a heel. Um, look at his reaction when Steve Austin arrives back, uh, driving the ambulance, and Vince McMahon's just in total disbelief. He sold it so legit and so well, he just... He just bought into the feud between him and Steve Austin. Sorry, the video cut out there abruptly. As I was saying, I thought Vince McMahon, you know, um, deserved to win the Royal Rumble that year. I thought it was, you know, fun booking and it was a great storyline. As for the 2000 Royal Rumble, it gets praised quite a lot. Too much, I think. I didn't think it was that great. The 2000 Royal Rumble for 999 one was better. But maybe that's my Austin Mark talking inside because I, I didn't think, I thought it was way too predictable The Rock winning this one. And I didn't think he needed it. I thought he was electrifying enough, you know. I thought I would have preferred the real Royal Rumble winner of that match, the Big Show, to have actually, you know, 
won the match that night. Um, I, uh, I really like The Rock. He doesn't quite make it into my top 10 wrestlers of all time, but I recognise him as one of the biggest stars of all time, but I didn't think he needed this Rumble win. As for Austin winning his third Rumble match, um, his first in two years at the 2001 event, I, I loved it as a kid, I can't lie. Um, and if anybody deserved to win the Royal Rumble three times, it was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Trust me, you know, without guys like Austin and Hogan, we wouldn't be talking about wrestling today. Hogan put wrestling on the map, Austin um, resurrected wrestling. The WWF enemies, you know, they were getting killed by WCW. And if it weren't for guys like Steve Austin and The Rock, we, we wouldn't be talking about wrestling today. Not the WWE anyways. Then uh, Triple H returned from his quad injury in 2002 and won the 2002 Royal Rumble. It has its moments throughout. Um, I think it's a bit overrated, the 2002 Royal Rumble. As for Triple H winning, <coughs> again, it was like, like The Rock winning in 2000. It was slightly predictable. Uh, I'm not the biggest Triple H mark. I, I don't think he's best for business, um, but I, I could I could see you know he got a great pop when he returned in 2002, and I, I understand him winning in two in 2002. But um, do I think he's one of the greatest Rumble winners ever? No. Brock Lesnar won in 2003. Love Brock Lesnar. 2003 was his year. And um, the best way to book a beast is to book him dominant. So um, who else to win the Royal Rumble that year but Brock himself? Chris Benoit. Now, Chris Benoit, of course, a controversial name nowadays. In the last 10, nearly 11, it'll be 11 years since that Chris Benoit tragedy took place. Um, horrible, horrible, but... When I talk about Chris Benoit, the wrestler, he was one of the best. He was one of the greatest technical wrestlers ever, and he put on a fantastic show. I I, I like liking the 2004 Royal Rumble as the um, the sort of uh, the 2000s version of the Royal Rumble 992. It was like really really good, and it was fairly uh, star stacked too. You know. Um, you had Mick Foley returning, and you had, you know, Kurt Angle in the Rumble. You had Bill Goldberg, one of his two appearances in the Rumble. He was very dominant. He had fun spots. Um, and I just thought it was a very enjoyable, well-worked, well-booked Royal Rumble match throughout. And I thought Chris Benoit put on a fantastic performance. Um, so, yeah, definitely, you know, as far as being a wrestler, he was... Definitely one of the greatest Royal Rumble winners of all time. Now, 2005 was another solid um, Royal Rumble match. Um, I didn't think it was as good as the 2004 match, but I really I enjoyed it. It's one of, definitely one of my favourites. Of course, the elimination everyone remembers is Snitsky taking Paul London's head off and him doing that you know 360 spin in the air and almost breaking his neck on the outside and. That was quite the spot. That was, uh, I was like, she, like, I was like a moment in time sort of spot. Um, anyways, they um, had a botch ending for this one where um, Batista was supposed to just eliminate John Cena, but they both fell out. Vince McMahon came out and uh, he blew both his quads and ended up sitting in the ring, in the ring looking a bit stupid. And uh, the match got, you know, restarted again. The final two, John Cena got eliminated like he was supposed to, and Batista won. Um, am I the biggest Batista mark? No, but again, I thought, you know, 2005 was one of his best years, and he was um, red hot at the time. So it made a lot of sense. Uh, Batista winning John Cena. You know what I'm like with John Cena. I'm not a fan of John Cena. And he wasn't quite at the level 
to be winning our Royal Rumble yet. So I was happy with Batista winning out of them two anyways that year. Um, Rey Mysterio winning the 2006 Royal Rumble is the most ridiculous moment, one of the most ridiculous moments of all time in terms of wrestling. I love Rey Mysterio but he's not he's not a heavyweight champion. He's not the guy that should be winning the one of the biggest matches of the year. I'm sorry, he's just not. And he, he, he unlike Chris Benoit from a couple years prior, Rey Mysterio he, he was lay, lying down for most of the match. I thought he was one of the, definitely one of the worst Royal Rumble winners. And I, I really like Ray as an in ring performer, but as far as Rumble winners, no. Then um, in 2007, one of the old timers, one of the part timers, Mark uh, the Undertaker, he uh, won his first ever Royal Rumble in 2007. He had a great showdown at the end with Shawn Michaels. It was like a almost you could call a per equal to their eventual WrestleMania matches just a couple of years down the road in Houston, Texas as well. And um, it was nice to see even for you could say the Undertaker even at, in 2007 was past his prime by then. He um, could still pull on the good matches and uh, it was it was it was nice to see him finally win a Royal Rumble. Uh, and at the time, of course, is you know he still had his streak, and um, he was being booked right at the WrestleMania events, and um, yeah, it was it was it made it interesting heading into WrestleMania 23. Um, 2008. Oh, I had a blank there almost, but then I remembered. Yes, John Cena. His surprise. I remember watching it live, and you know I was one of the fans the smarks that was legit shocked to see him because she heard you know in the dirt sheets that uh, John Cena was going to be injured he was going to miss Wrestlemania so it was a legit surprise when he entered number 30 at the 2008 Royal Rumble um was I happy to see him win no because I'm not a fan but uh, it was better than Triple H winning again uh 2009 Randy Orton um, I was uh, I was watching it live. I was on the road to the only WrestleMania I've been to in attendance. It wasn't the best WrestleMania, but it did feature you know Shawn Michaels v The Undertaker and perhaps the best WrestleMania match of all time. So there was that. So I was watching it and I was like, yeah, this is weird. I'm going to be at this WrestleMania this year, and we're on a road to WrestleMania. And I thought the storyline, even for the match turned out to be the shits. I thought the storyline leading into WrestleMania between Randy Orton and Triple H was excellent, but the match not so excellent. As for Orton winning the Royal Rumble, his first of two, yeah, he, he, he was definitely the man to win that year. I had a had a slight feeling Triple H was going to win for you know, and I was I was nervous towards the end when I was watching it, but I was, I was glad to see Triple H get dumped out. Uh, 2010 Edge. Now I am. I always thought Edge was entered the Hall of Fame way too early. I know he retired, and that's what they usually do. They put the one of the top stars in after they retire and stuff. But when Edge went in the Hall of Fame before Macho Man and Warrior and Jake Roberts, I thought it was a sin, a complete, a total sin. Considering Edge was a fan of those guys when he was in the attendance at WrestleMania 6 and he's in the Hall of Fame before then. I don't know. I, I, demolition still not in the Hall of Fame. Anyway, I'm rambling on. <laughs> this is going to be a long video. It's going to be uh, two parts at least. But um, I didn't think the ending was that great. You know, John Cena just sort of got chucked over. It was sort of like just a, another rumble you know, elimination, it wasn't very exciting, it was, you know, with the returns happened before, we've seen it done with Triple H, you may have seen it done with Austin, you know, when he returned to the company, and you just know when a major superstar returns, that they're, they're, they're going to win the Royal Rumble, and when they did start doing it two, three times by 2010, you know, with John Cena, his shock return as well, it starts to get a little bit, 
be a little bit dull, you know. They need to, you know, start mixing it up when they start repeating it, you know, the same formula over and over again. And uh, I wasn't, I, I just thought, you know, it's a new decade. I thought, you know, Edge was at the end of his career. Um, he only lasted another year, and I thought, you know, it was, it was time for like a CM Punk uh, to win the Royal Rumble match, especially in a new decade. 2011 was the first ever 40-man Royal Rumble, and the only one to date. It was actually the first Royal Rumble event I reviewed on YouTube. Um, I had just been on YouTube less than a year by January, and I reviewed it. Not a very good review, but it was the first. Um, Alberto Del Rio won it. I enjoyed, I remember enjoying parts of the 2011 Royal Rumble, it was a very long match obviously, but I did enjoy it and it was a nice, like a breath of fresh air, someone other than a top star, um, someone fresh who's never won it before and it was quite, you know, to me anyway, I was quite shocked to see Alberto Del Rio winning. Um, now around that time, 2010, 2011, I hadn't been watching as much WWE product perhaps if I was, I would have not been so surprised of Del Rio winning, but when I, I was watching it live, I was, you know, generally surprised that John Cena never won. I was happy to see The Miz eliminate him. 2012, I didn't watch live, but I watched later on, uh, Sheamus, uh, he won the Royal Rumble match, uh, Sheamus... <laughs> Again, I've never been quite a fan of Sheamus. I think his best work is now when he's tag teaming with Cesaro. They put on hell of a tag team matches. But um, I wasn't too impressed with when I heard Sheamus won the 2012 Royal Rumble. I thought there was much more talented guys around at the time that could have, you know, won the Royal Rumble match. And I didn't think Sheamus, uh, I wouldn't have booked Sheamus to win. Um, John Cena, he got his second Royal Rumble win. He may get his third Royal Rumble win this year. That's the, you know, I think he's odds on favourite to tie Steve um, in most Royal Rumble victories. Um, I, don't, I don't think uh, 2013 or 2012 Royal Rumble's matches overall were great. John Cena winning again to uh, headline against The Rock at WrestleMania 29, the twice in a lifetime match. It was just far too predictable and nobody wanted to see that match again. And it, it, it was a stinker of a main event. Um, and then we get into the two of the most infamous Rumble matches back to back. Um, fans did not enjoy the 2014 or 2015 Royal Rumble. 2014 one was won by Batista. I was like, why is Batista winning the 2014 Royal Rumble? Daniel Bryan, red hot at the time, wasn't even in it. He should have won or Punk should have won. Um, unfortunately, that was the last time CM Punk was in the WWE ring uh, nearly four years ago, can you believe? And uh, hey, I tell you, I'm not the biggest uh, CM Punk. Part, uh, CM Punk, Mark, I like him, I really like him, but um, I'm not one of those fans that still chants his name each, each week, but what I will say is uh, the product hasn't been as good since since yeah, he's not been on television. He really made Raw watchable in my opinion. But anyway, B Batista didn't deserve to win in 2014 and Roman Reigns certainly did not deserve to win in 2015. Just uh, wrestle crap. Um, and to be honest, even though it was a more enjoyable Royal Rumble in 2016, Triple H winning a Royal Rumble in this decade in 2016 is absolutely ridiculous. And, and, and to be fair, same with Randy Orton winning last year's Royal Rumble. Now, it was a good match overall. Roman Reigns eliminating The Undertaker, then going on to the retire The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Complete garbage. That was my garbage moment of 2017 as far as wrestling is concerned. But, um, you know, Triple H winning in 2016, uh, Orton winning in 2017, just ridiculous, come on. At least, you know, the guys I enjoyed, you know, Hogan won when he was in his prime and Austin won when he was in his prime. 
Triple H way out of his prime. Uh, Orton, his, his peak days are done. Um, it should have been new winners in 2016 and 2017. Um, and why, you know, why not have Brock Lesnar win one of these rumbles? Because you know he's still a beast. Um, he's still, you know, the highest paid wrestler the WWE has. You now, why I would have much preferred him winning one of the events rather than Triple H or Randy Orton. I just, um, well, hey, it was better than Roman Reigns winning, but say, you know, still Randy Orton winning in 2017. Nah. So hopefully. At least one of the Royal Rumbles this year will be good. Hopefully both of them will be good. The women's and the men's match. Um, my predictions for both. I'm not sure. I'm, so, I'm a bit out of touch with the WWE product. Um, is Alexa still champion? I'm not sure. I just haven't been up to date with the, the product since Survivor Series. Um, so I, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to say Ronda Rousey debuts and wins the women's and I'm gonna see um, John Cena whether you like it or not is gonna win the 2018 Royal Rumble that's my two predictions uh, hopefully both matches overall are good um, uh, yeah that's my thoughts and all the past winners of the Royal Rumble matches um, yeah that's 17 minutes and this is uh, me recording for the second time after the last video stopped um yeah this could be a four-part i'm thinking or maybe just a two we'll see we'll see